Hey everybody, I hope you all are doing well and welcome back to Michael's Matters. Now, as per usual, I of course am Michael. And as we start getting into the full swing of things in 2023, it's pretty easy to see that for the next couple of months, folks on social security programs, and again, that could be social security retirement, that could be Social Security Disability, SSDI, Supplemental Security Income, SSI, or VA or Railroad Retirement. Well, they are going to be essentially waiting with bated breath to see how this ongoing debt ceiling fight plays out between the Democrats and the Republicans. The reality is that it is a rock and a hard place for many Democrats as Republicans are trying to exact spending cuts on large social programs and retirement programs like Social Security and Medicare in exchange for raising the debt ceiling. But some of that may have changed as this week we actually start to get mixed signals from the GOP about cutting these programs. So today we are talking about the debt ceiling fight and how some of the rhetoric about cutting Social Security and Medicare has already changed this week. In addition to the fact that how if it does get cut, it will affect the millions of older Americans and folks who are on Social Security programs. Additionally, as well, uh, we will talk very briefly about how you would know if your Social Security benefits are actually taxable at the federal level level. Now, if you like these videos, if you find them interesting, if you find them helpful, hey, if you find them useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you can get updates when our newest and most informative videos become available. All right, now let's get down to the video. So let's start off today with the biggest change since last week in this ongoing debt ceiling fight. And remember, this is super important, especially for folks who are on Social Security programs, because of the fact that the main bargaining chip that Republicans are holding out on while refusing to vote on the debt ceiling limit is in exchange for the Democrats to make concessions on government spending for social programs like Social Security, like Medicare, and also like Medicaid. This could mean that the 69 million Americans who use the Social Security programs right now, and the millions more who will eventually use the programs down the road, myself included, including could be affected by the changes and the cuts that are being proposed. Uh, at least that's the way it was <laughs> last week. Now, as the rubber begins to meet the road, Republicans, well, they don't seem to be so steadfast in their demands for the specific cuts to Social Security as they were, and maybe even starting to show some cracks where last week they were all in lockstep. One of the most prominent doubters on the Republican side is Senator John Kennedy, yes, of those Kennedys, <laughs> who's a Republican out of Louisiana, who said that when asked about Biden's remark that the GOP wants to cut Social Security, quote, not even George Santos would make up a whopper like that, end quote. <laughs> Referring to Congressman George Santos, the first term congressman out of New York, a Republican who had, uh, <laughs> I guess we could say he creatively has embellished his curriculum vitae, uh, to put it mildly. Uh, also, he claims that he invented the Whopper. <laughs> Just kidding on that one. This follows after last week, former President Trump rebuked the idea of cutting Social Security funding in exchange for raising the debt ceiling. And moreover, as the debt ceiling fight has really started to heat up and the back rooms in Congress are full of members jostling and negotiating to try to get it fixed. Uh, Senator Joe Manchin, a notable centerline Democrat out of West Virginia, has said that Kevin McCarthy, the now Speaker of the House and the leader of the Republican majority in the House, has already told him that he has every intention to leave the cuts of Medicare and Social Security out of this debt ceiling negotiations moving forward. Which really kind of brings up a very interesting question about if Republicans truly are hell-bent on cutting down government spending, and if what Senator Manchin is saying is true, where else could those cuts come from? Roads? Bridges? Healthcare? Military? Foreign aid? Well, on Tuesday, CNN reported that Republican House members outlined their budget and spending goals and had indicated that there could be reforms to mandatory spending programs, which didn't explicitly say Social Security and Medicare, but also doesn't rule them out as well. Other programs that could fall into the category and would affect millions of seniors, older Americans and retirees, uh, would be cuts to programs like Medicaid or Medi-Cal as it's called here in California. Previously, there had been attempts by members of the GOP, really since the beginning of healthcare reform, like Obamacare, <laughs> probably even all the way back to when Medicaid started, uh, to try to cut down on those programs, uh, which essentially right now have 
blank checks, but rather change it to what's called a block grant system that would limit how much spending the state could get from the federal government for these healthcare programs, which would ultimately save the federal government a lot of money, would also do that at the expense of the health of the community members. This would affect for sure some of the 7 million older Americans who currently rely on Medicaid to help them pay for their medications, to help them pay for their Medicare, and to also help them pay for their doctor's costs. Initially, Kevin McCarthy, if you recall, had a big fight to get elected not so long ago to his position as the Speaker of the House. I think it probably took, I think it was 15 tries, which is way more tries than it takes to get some popes elected. But to, in order to get that position, he had to make serious concessions to the farthest and most fiscally conservative members of his party, who despite McCarthy's intent to not cut programs like Social Security and Medicare, will still be under a lot of pressure from the right side to do so. So needless to say, it is no secret that some of the most expensive social programs that we have in the United States our Social Security, our Medicare, and our Medicaid. But if cuts are made to any of these programs, or perhaps all these programs, it will definitely have an outsized effect on those Americans, especially older Americans, who rely on them to help them live their lives with dignity. And many of these individuals are our family members, like our parents, or our grandparents, our neighbors, and even our friends. Now let's talk a little bit about Social Security and taxes. Now first, as per usual for this, I am not a tax person, I don't want to be a tax person, and this is not tax advice. And if you are not sure uh, where you fall or whether you think you will be taxed on your social security benefits, definitely talk to a tax person to give you specific information about your personal situation. So with that being said, let's talk about social security and whether or not they are taxed, because since it is tax season, and these questions are going to come up a lot for the 69 million Americans who are currently receiving benefits through Social Security, and especially more over so because of the COLA massive increase from last year, it's gonna mean a lot of those individuals uh, who got that 5.9% COLA increase are gonna have a lot more money than they thought they had, and that could actually put them in a situation where some of their Social Security benefits are taxed. Now the quick and dirty of the Social Security taxation, according to Social Security, and I'll put the link down below if you wanna read it all for yourself, is for folks who are on Social Security benefits, they may have to pay taxes on up to 85% of their benefits. The first scenario is if you file your federal tax return as an individual and if your combined income exceeds a specific income range. For an individual, if your income is between $25,000 and $34,000 during the year combined, um, then that means that you may have to pay income tax on up to 50% of your social security benefits. But if you're an individual and your income is over $34,000 a year, then that is when you would pay income tax on up to 85% of your social security benefits. Alternatively, if you file a joint return and if you and your spouse have combined incomes of up to $32,000 or $44,000, so in between there, that is when up to 50% of your social security benefits may be taxed. And if your joint combined income is over $44,000 a year, that's when up to 85% of your social security income could be taxed. I'll leave a link uh, to the social security page that lays it out pretty clearly. But again, if you have questions about your specific personal situations, obviously reach out to a tax person. Um, if your income is on the lower side, there are some great organizations like VITA, V-I-T-A, uh, who are a nonprofit organization who help older Americans and seniors and really anyone uh, with lower income to get their taxes filed at no additional cost. And they can give you expert help as well. Lastly, if you do end up having to pay taxes on your social security benefits, uh, you are still able to make the payments quarterly uh, to the IRS, uh, or you can even opt to have uh, the federal taxes withheld from your social security check. So, uh, you know, neither of those really sound appealing, but if you have to choose one, you got to choose one. Overall, I guess this week we learned kind of two things. First is that the Republicans are willing to risk shutting down the entirety of the country in order to cut down on government spending primarily from large scale social programs. Even though there is unarguably plenty of fat that could be cut from the budgets of places like the military or corporate loopholes that allow companies to not pay billions of dollars in taxes. But the Democrats again are not innocent in this whole situation either. They are willing to let spending rise seemingly indefinitely, which is really basically playing chicken with the lives of the current seniors and social security beneficiaries, as well as those social security beneficiaries who are yet to come, like moi. Because even Social Security themselves say that by 2035, the program will not be able to meet its obligations to pay out benefits that it has to pay every single month. So either Congress works together to find a solution now or scrambles to put something together as the train reaches the end of the tracks. But either way, without cooperation, without compromise, and without a clear consensus from Congress and the White House and Senate, nothing is going to get 
done. And this is one of those times where a stalemate, sitting still and getting nothing accomplished is just as dangerous as cutting the programs themselves. Now, one silver lining to this whole situation is that the current makeup of Congress being mixed, Republican majority in the House and Democratic majority in the Senate, and I guess in the White House, it is uh, times like this that these difficult policy cuts and progress often get written. And even these two diametric opposing forces could maybe possibly actually eke out a deal that could preserve the programs like Social Security and Medicare in the long run and not cut the legs out from seniors and retirees in the short term. All right, so that's it for today's Michael's Matters. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, if you found it interesting, if you found it helpful, hey, <laughs> if you found it useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, that way you can get updates when our newest and most informative videos become available. So for Michael's Matters, I'm Michael, hoping that you take care of yourself, take care of others, and have a happy, healthy day.